Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and they put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him. And they took a reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. Thus far the gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. There is a time when I read the St. Matthew's Passion and other Passion's narratives when it comes to the part not when Christ was crucified that ends up bringing stinging tears to my eyes. But I remember especially when I was a vicar and I was the one who had to read, or was chosen to read, each gospel section of the Ten Embrace service. To this day, there's still a section that I have a hard time reading, in particular. And it's not those who cried out, crucify him, crucify him. We come to expect that. That's the very least that they did was to yell out the sentence. And we do that too, not only to Christ, but to other people. To those who are considered guilty until proven innocent. All except for ourselves, of course. Everyone else is guilty until proven innocent. And we cry to, for those who have sinned against us, maybe not quite as loudly as the crowd, crucify them, crucify them. Or at least, what goes around, comes around. At least we hope get, they get, in the language here, their comeuppance. They get what they deserve. And so, let him be crucified. That, that never really brought the stinging tears to my eyes. And you know what I mean when I say the stinging tears. Not the ones that flow, but the ones that kind of bubble up to the surface and you go, this is unfair. It's clear that this is unfair. Um, many of us who have laid loved ones to rest know that feeling. It's almost worse than if we just bawled. But it's the stinging realization of reality that hits your worst nightmare. <laughs> we have members in particular who have laid children to rest. Most recently our dear B's son's birthday just passed on Friday and Jason's just a little while ago. And so we know the stinging of the eyes. But never would we consider calling crucify them, crucify them. And yet that's what we did for the only one who is actually innocent. But again, that's not really the worst. In fact, for our dead, we try our best to honor them through tombstones, through having a committee for the cemetery, through keeping up with the, lo the lawn, erecting statues, having words of comfort placed on the tombs. 
And yet, here, we have none of that. We have the exact opposite of that. Not a person dealt in dignity. Not a person that, that's held in high regard and dear to anyone except for his mother, St. Mary. And John, who is there because he had to be. He was predestined to be. For Mary had to be given over to someone. No, it's not that that stings my eyes. It's not even the hail King of the Jews or the fact that we cover Christ with a white linen in our crucifixes so that we don't have to see the truth in how He was crucified, completely ashamed and embarrassed. It's not the reed that they put in the right hand to mock uh, His royalty for the Jews. Or the crown of thorns that they put on His head to scream out the mocking of Him being an actual king. None of that really stung my eyes. It was when they said that they spit on Him and mocked Him. And then this part in particular, that's not in this text. And slapped Him with the open hand. Those three things. I cannot see my God having being done to Him. That God Himself would be spit on, would be hit with open hands and mocked, saying, prophesy to us. Which one of us hit you? And the answer is humanity. Sin hath hit you, O man. And you dare I prophesy? Then let me prophesy this. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is finished. I wonder if there was no redemption for Judas Iscariot, could there have been redemption for those who slapped the face of God? Could there be redemption for those who spit in the face of God? Is there redemption? Could there have been a redemption for those who laid the crown on His head, making sure to bring maximum pain. Those who stripped God of His clothes and who put mock scarlet robes around Him. If there is no redemption for Judas, can there be redemption for them? And the answer is, God, there has to be. Because if there's no redemption for them, there's no redemption for us. For we have done the same thing each and every day. Do we spit in the face of God and yet God, Christ uh, prays on our behalf, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We mock and profane and use God's name in ways that we should not. And yet, Christ prays for us. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We use the name of Christ flippantly, even in emoji style, or OMG or whatever is the new cool way to mock Christ. But here's the reality. There must be redemption for them if there is to be redemption for us. And so when Christ says, forgive them for they know not what they do, and the sacred wounds 
are brought unto the body of God, Christ Himself. And when the blood drips, every time the blood drips, it calls out your name. It calls out the name of all the baptized. It calls out the name of every person who is in our cemetery. Every baptized Christian throughout all of Christendom. The blood of Christ cries out the name of them who died and for we who shall die. It cries out. And God the Father looks at us through blood-filled eyes and says, I will, my son. I will forgive them. And I will remind them so that they know what they have done. That they will turn away from it. And I will pardon them for your sake. And that's, why, that's when the rubber hits the road, when theology really hits the person. Not in think tanks or as thought projects or as essays, but rather in the true and certain hope that when we lay our loved ones down to the ground, we know that as Christ was laid to the ground, so His life would be picked back up and so will there. And so will yours. So let the mocking happen now. For weeping and tarrying, it only tarries for the night. But rejoicing comes in the morning. Easter morning. Amen.